The cops in the beginning really frustrated me because they didn't even give the investigation a chance. Welcome to another bookish review. Now, as you know, I am reading Stephen King's The Outsider. Now, this was a book I picked up on a whim at a garage sale for a dollar because it caught my attention and because there were garage sales going out all around town while I was out on a bike ride, so I figured why not. Plus, I've been trying to get into Stephen King's books and I have not found the one yet that would push me along, so I figured getting this would be another try at trying to get into King's books. Now, this one is less a horror and more a crime, mystery, thriller type of book. So, if you don't like, like, true crime or crime stuff in general, then this book probably isn't for you. And just a warning off the bat, if this book looks interesting to you, just be warned that there is a very violent crime that happens in this book to a child. So if that is something you are very sensitive about, or if you're sensitive about that sort of stuff in general, then this is probably not the book for you. And also, before we get into anything deeper about this book, there will be spoilers ahead, so just keep that in mind as we continue with the review. I just wanted to give that sensitive topic warning before we got any farther into this, because it gets dark and it is described all through the book. So if you're someone sensitive to that, then this is not the book for you. But let's get into this. So we follow a detective by the name of Ralph Anderson and we start out seeing him interviewing people because they are trying to figure out who committed this crime that was discovered. And it is this horribly brutal crime of a boy that was left for dead after being eaten and being brutally assaulted with a tree branch and then killed. And the reason we are following these interviews is because he's lining up all the witnesses that supposedly saw the person that did this. And the whole time I'm thinking everything is adding up against this person. If this person, Terry, the baseball coach and who works with children often, was the one that committed this crime, you'd think he'd be a little more careful about it because there were reports of his face just being everywhere and on top of that, despite living in their county, Flint County, his entire life almost, he's having to ask for directions and being spotted on CCTV cameras because this was set in 2018. So you know there's cameras everywhere that could have picked up his face. So the whole time I'm thinking he was not careful at all, for one, and for two, you're going to arrest this man on witness testimony alone. There is a reason people don't get brought in on just witness testimonies alone. You could bring him in, sure, but you need to investigate and continue with the trial before you say that they're guilty of murder. Because even though something may look that way, they could be being framed and they could be being like set up or who knows what. So they end up bringing this man, Terry, in on charges of murder and they do this publicly. They don't do it secretly. They do it in the middle of a busy baseball game where everyone is watching. So the family of the victim is understandably livid at this man because they think that he killed his son. Despite all the eyewitness testimony though, some things when they actually start to investigate other than just talking about peop to people start to not add up. Like, the first thing Terry says is, well if you would have looked at my alibi, you would have seen that I was three hours away at a book signing convention meeting the author of this book I like to read. To their surprise, when they actually look into Terry's alibi, He's telling the truth. He's caught on security cameras. He has fingerprint evidence to prove he was there at the time of the crime. 
And that's finally when the cops start to go full tilt on this investigation. Because they're like, something's not adding up here. A man cannot be in two places at once. And I'm over here like, this is Stephen King. It's probably a shapeshifter or a doppelganger or something like that. Because like, you know, King, he never sticks to the natural. There's always got to be some supernatural element sprinkled in there. But like, the cops in this were like so stupid. They arrested this man and basically hung him at the stake on eyewitness testimonies alone. They ignored the fact that he had an alibi. They didn't bother with forensic evidence. They didn't check security camera footage until it was too late. Until they had already convicted this man of murder with virtually no proof. And then as he was going up to his trial, he gets shot dead by the last remaining family member of the boy who was killed. And now they think the case is closed because they still think he's guilty for murder even though there was never a trial. He was never given the right to prove that he wasn't this monster they were accusing him of. So everyone is like, why don't I feel like this is over? Something is wrong here because there's no way in hell a man can be in two places at once. And I'm like, oh, now you're trying to investigate after the man you thought it was is already dead. That's some high quality police work. I like true crime stuff. Well, technically this isn't true crime, but crime stuff. So this was the first book that I've read of King's that genuinely kept me engaged and kept me like reading. Because I've tried to read quite a few of his books in the past and ended up tossing them to the side and never bothering to pick them up again because they just go on and on and on. Although King does have this tendency to point out way too many details that end up having no bearing on the story, with this one it was easier to like look past those overly detailed paragraphs and keep reading because I wanted to know, okay, if it wasn't Terry, then who was it? Was it some sort of shapeshifter? Was it a demon? Was it a doppelganger? Which, if you don't know what a doppelganger is, it's a twin of someone who isn't actually related to them by blood. It's like a supernatural twin. And they say everyone has a doppelganger. Anyway, the cops in the beginning really frustrated me because they didn't even give the investigation a chance. And finally, when I thought they were about to give the investigation a chance, the man ended up dead. So I'm like, okay. And honestly, in the end, the final fight with the actual committer of the crime was kind of anticlimactic. You don't exactly, you didn't get to know what it was or why it was doing these things or why it needed the kids' energy and their fear. And Did I think that King brought up the crime way too much? Yeah. He brought it up a lot. I mean, I guess that's the point of the investigation. But we get that something horrible happened to this boy. You don't have to keep saying it. We understand why you're doing what you're doing. We understand why this man needs to be caught. Because he is a violent criminal that needs to be stopped. And I felt like the way he was stopped and how it was handled was just very anticlimactic. Other than that, the rest of the book was really good. And it was the first King book I actually got through fully. So I enjoyed it. But next, even though this book spoiled it for me, which was so surprising and has never happened to me that a book I'm reading beforehand spoils the one I'm reading next, but I'm still going to read Dracula by Bram Stoker. I've wanted to read this for a while. I finally got it, so I'm going to go into Dracula next. So that's all for me. I'm going to stop rambling. Hope to see you next time.